May 25th, 2019, Double or Nothing, the first pay-per-view for the challenger brand that would change everything in pro wrestling, All Elite Wrestling. John Moxley, formerly known to the WWE fan base as Dean Ambrose, made a dramatic and shocking entrance through the crowd in the main event, interrupting Chris Jericho's post-match promo after he defeated Kenny Omega for the new AEW World Championship. The crowd erupted with excitement as Mox made his AEW debut. Things were about to change. It's Sports Key to Wrestling. Get into the comments below and let us know what you think of John Moxley in AEW. This was going to be one of the most important moments in AEW history, a very new company that needed new star power at the top. They had Jericho, they had Omega from New Japan Pro Wrestling, but this was just another big name to pull away from WWE and create something different and fresh and new. But before we tell this story, it's important to know how John Moxley, who was one of the most popular people in WWE at the time, joined the rival company. This all really started when Dean Ambrose made his long-awaited return to WWE after an eight-month injury rehab. Fans were begging for something fresh from him. The lunatic fringe whole spiel had run its course, but upon his return, he was instantly paired with his S.H.I.E.L.D. brother, Seth Rollins, who was hunting the Intercontinental Championship at the time. Playing the second fiddle to Seth didn't help, and to make matters worse, the Shield got back together just a few weeks after his return. Roman Reigns had just won the Universal Championship while Seth was holding the Intercontinental Championship. Dean was without a belt, and this made him look uh, maybe just less than, obviously, just by comparison. WWE could have capitalized on his return, but instead his popularity was probably used to prop up ratings or do a short-term Shield reunion thing. It just wasn't clicking. But WWE also started teasing a heel turn from Ambrose. Ah, there we go. Character development. We're down. Which was met with intrigue, as he hasn't been a villain in his singles WWE career up until that point. Then October 22nd, 2018, everything was kind of thrown for a loop. Rowan Reigns announced he was suffering once again from leukemia and relinquished the Universal Championship, a real-life situation that caused a lot of very real emotions. On the main event of that exact same show for WWE Raw, Seth and Dean captured the WWE Tag Team titles, in honor of their now sidelined friend, Roman Reigns. But before they could celebrate, Ambrose snapped and turned on Rollins. Yeah, right after they won the titles. Though WWE was going in this direction with Ambrose, the real life things that happened with Roman made fans feel like maybe they should pivot in a different direction. But they didn't. They kept him heel, they kept going in a heel direction with him, and they had him put on a gas mask for some reason. The promos were unclear, it was odd, it felt off the mark, and there was internal insistence from WWE on Ambrose, reportedly, to stay on those scripted storyline points, something that just didn't fit with the whole idea of what he was doing as a performer. You have a big name in WWE that doesn't like where things are going. And then there was a reported situation of wanting Ambrose to say some very insensitive things about Roman's illness. Yeah, he didn't like that either. 2019 came and Ambrose made the decision. The decision that would change everything for him and a lot of other people. The decision to leave WWE. This was influenced by his desire for creative freedom and the opportunity to express himself as a performer and storyteller. He was looking for a wrestling environment that allowed him to be more authentic, more unscripted, and obviously more edgy. Following the 2019 Royal Rumble, news started to circulate that Dean Ambrose would not sign a new deal with WWE that would expire in April of 2019. At first, fans were kind of in disbelief. This is WWE. And many thought it was just a storyline or just, you know, misreported news that wasn't news at all. Just ah, brush that aside. But Dean Ambrose was dead serious. He had enough and wanted to explore wrestling outside of WWE. Dean Ambrose's exit from WWE was a hit on the company. Let's not put it lightly. He was very popular and established and a key member of The Shield. Oh, by the way, have you checked out our two-part series, Breaking Down Everything with Them? Go, go watch that one. WWE instantly put The Shield back together one last time to book a final run for the group before Ambrose left the company. This was a goodbye to Dean Ambrose, but WWE did not exactly give him the respect he deserved off camera, depending on who you talk to. He was paid, reportedly, according to him on a podcast appearance, just 
$500 during the Shield's final chapter event. Yeah, that's minimum wage for a wrestler of his level. Below minimum wage, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, he really ripped into WWE on that Talk is Jericho appearance, where he also broke down why the creative experience in the company was underwhelming, to say the least. Immediately after leaving WWE, he uploaded a video to social media which depicted him escaping a prison in full cinematic dramatic mode, indicating that he had finally left the company. Also, he started calling himself John Moxley very much to remind fans, you weren't getting Ambrose, you were getting this grisly, hardcore version of him from his pre-WWE indie days. Fans were intrigued, and the social media discussion around him started to ramp up. They wanted to know what his next move would be. Not long after this, he made his AEW debut at Double or Nothing 2019. This was a huge deal. Tony Khan met with Mox in his home and a conversation in his kitchen convinced him to sign a contract with the company. Yeah, it took a gamble, but it worked. Upon arriving at AEW Double or Nothing, he targeted the former IWGP heavyweight champion and executive vice president of AEW, Kenny Omega. He brutally attacked Omega, sending a clear message that he was there to make an impact. Yeah, he DDT'd him on a giant stack of poker chips. He had his AEW debut match at Fighter Fest event in June of that year where he defeated Joey Janela in an unsanctioned match. Mox also arrived in New Japan Pro Wrestling and challenged Juice Robinson for the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship and at the Best of the Super Juniors 26 event, he won the title, making him the first wrestler to hold both the IWGP and WWE United States titles. He then announced himself for the G1 Climax Tournament, but wasn't able to win the tournament. In just a few short months after leaving WWE, Moxley was still one of the most popular men in pro wrestling and was a guy who was definitely making it a different game to follow. The much anticipated AEW Mega Match with Kenny Omega and Moxley was set for All Out on August 31st, 2019. However, and unfortunately, a week before the event, Mox was forced to pull out after being diagnosed with a MRSA staph infection in his elbow. This only fueled the rivalry as the eventual unsanctioned match at full gear was brutal. And I mean brutal. This was a level of hardcore wrestling that many mainstream fans had not seen in years. Moxley laid out a beating on Omega and proved that he was one of the best to beat in AEW. His authenticity as a performer was never more evident than in his promos and in-ring work at this time. His no-nonsense, unscripted from what we could tell, and often profanity-laden promos resonated with fans who felt they were getting more of a grittiness from him than maybe they were getting from other shows on televised wrestling. It was more organic and emotionally charged, for sure. Following his success over Kenny Omega, Moxley started hunting for Chris Jericho and the AEW world title. He was involved in an entertaining feud with Jericho and WWE, which gave fans a glimpse of what they could do together. Here now in AEW, their feud was considered even better, with Jericho trying to recruit him into his inner circle faction, but that didn't work. And Mox went on to defeat Chris for the AEW world title, becoming the second man to hold the title at the Revolution event. Less than a year after leaving WWE, Mox was a world champion in the rival promotion. And if that's not success, I don't know what is. I was at the Wind Trust Arena in Chicago when Moxley beat Jericho for the title. You felt like things were going in a great direction. AEW was truly establishing itself as the brand outside of WWE to follow for wrestling. And Moxley was the guy at the top. But things were about to change. The momentum with Moxley and AEW, though, unfortunately would slow down, as so would the whole world due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Everything was shut down. We didn't have fans at events. It kind of dulled the edges of what you could do with empty arenas and limited fans. It wasn't ideal for a wrestler, especially since most of them is getting a reaction from a crowd, had to perform in front of no crowds or very small crowds while also on television. They continued to do wrestling shows in the pandemic in Daly's Place in Florida, AEW Dynamite, their shows stayed on the air, featuring a limited number of wrestlers, essential staff, and almost no audience. The absence of a live audience, though, changed the atmosphere for wrestling shows, obviously. And it made it challenging for someone like Moxley, who's built on emotions, to become an even more emotional, newly crowned AEW World Champion. This was just unfortunate. 
And as the title reign was featured in the front of empty arena fans, it just didn't feel like what it was supposed to be. Didn't everything in wrestling at that time? Moxley still went out there every single week and performed like he had an entire crowd in front of him, even if they couldn't get a crowd there. And he had the entire company on his back. He defended the title in some of the best matches during the pandemic era against the likes of Jake Hager, Mr. Brody Lee, Lance Archer, MJF, Brian Cage, Darby Allen, Eddie Kingston, you name it. He had some great matches under some very challenging circumstances. This made Mox into an incredibly reliable performer, one that we already knew he was. AEW bet on him, and even during a challenging circumstance, the bet paid off. But every good thing comes to an end, and his strong title reign ended at the hands of his old and probably his best AEW rival, Kenny Omega, at the Winter Is Coming special event in 2020, which turned out to be a dark side for Kenny Omega and a dark day as Moxley was dethroned in some very questionable circumstances. Following this, Mox decided to team up with Eddie Kingston and go for the AEW Tag Team titles. Yeah, he wanted to do everything. And even though he was unsuccessful in capturing them at Double or Nothing 2021, he gave an unbelievable match against the Young Bucks. Around this time, he changed his theme song into Wild Thing, which turned out to be a great addition to his character and his entire act. This was also a perfect time to do that as the world was starting to open up and wrestling shows were slowly starting to appear in front of live audiences again. Every time Mox came through the crowd on Wild Thing, the crowd erupted and sang along. As COVID restrictions were lifted around the world, smaller indie shows started to happen, and Moxley decided to sink his teeth into those. He wanted to literally do everything he could do in wrestling. No longer having the AEW world title didn't mean you wouldn't have an inspired John Moxley out there, who ensured the relaunch of smaller promotions like Game Changer Wrestling into big things coming out of the pandemic. He did right by wrestling, because wrestling did right by him. The next turn in this story is an unfortunate one, and one that wrestlers deal with. It is not just a physically demanding world, but a mentally demanding one. And Moxley was dealing with that himself as one of the top performers in AEW. He struggled with an alcohol addiction. He made the right decision and the healthy one to take time off from the company and checked himself into rehab in Las Vegas around this time. His absence was felt in AEW, and that's why when he returned in January of 2022, he was welcomed with open arms and a loud, loud audience chanting his name at the top of their lungs. As he walked out through the crowd, he looked leaner, healthier, and brighter in his eyes. You could see the happiness in his moment here. You could see that he was passionate to embrace wrestling once again as a smarter, wiser, and more full person who had overcome his demons. Fans gave him unanimous support. Once again, he was on top of All Elite. Moxley then set his eyes on another foe who had jumped from WWE to AEW, Brian Danielson. They had an incredible match at Revolution 2022, which Moxley won. Following this, he started teaming up with Danielson to form the Blackpool Combat Club. Soon, Wheeler Yuta joined the group as the young rookie, and Claudio Castagnoli joined the group as well as a brutalizing technical wizard, making it one of the most dominant groups in AEW at the time. Moxley looked amazing in the ring and looked like he was legitimately having fun with his BCC friends. Around this time, a new AEW world champion was crowned, CM Punk. Yeah, another big name you know from WWE. But unfortunately, he got injured just five days after winning that title and had to take some time off. This meant that the company was without a world champion, and instead of stripping Punk of the title, AEW decided to crown an interim world champion, and it was none other than John Moxley, who was literally the best choice to hold the title around this time. The tournament that was put together saw Moxley once again get fan support. He'd already proven he could be the reliable guy during the pandemic, and he was proving in this circumstance with an injured guy, he could be another guy to step up. He was the safe choice, and the only problem was he was the interim world champion, and Punk was still the recognized world champion, which felt unjust, you know? Mox was having brutal matches week after week, only to be called interim world champion. 
A few months later, Punk returned with his title, so we had to get that unification match, and it was set for AEW Dynamite on August of 2022. Everyone knew that Mox was sort of the placeholder. Punk's gonna get the belt off him. Yeah, they're just gonna tie this whole unification thing up. It's a loose end, but no, that didn't happen. Moxley absolutely destroyed Punk, who was fresh off his injury return, and squashed him to unify the AEW Championship. No one saw that coming, and quite frankly, he deserved that. But this was also viewed as a controversial decision, as there was no long-term plans for Moxley to hold the world title, and he did lose the title to CM Punk a few weeks later at AEW All Out. A very good match, by the way, but a match that few people remember, because we all know what came next. During the post-show media scrum for that pay-per-view, Punk went off on the elite of the Young Bucks, Hangman Page and Kenny Omega, and then they had a backstage altercation, and all these people were involved and suspended, including your world champion who just took the title off of John Moxley, CM Punk. Actually, Punk got injured during that match against Moxley, so he wasn't going to be out of it regardless. Around this time, reports started coming out indicating that several backstage altercations in AEW were happening. And guess who was chosen again to be the guy during these dark times? You guessed it. The most reliable man in pro wrestling seems to be John Moxley. Mox went on to win the championship for a third time in his career, and yes, again, there was no long-term plans for him to be the champion. He was the guy to put over MJF at Full Gear 2022. He did just that. You might say that Moxley is the man who made the AEW World Championship more than others? Yeah, let me know if you agree with that take in the comments. Every time AEW goes through tough times, there's one man to fall back on, and that's John Moxley. His journey from the world of WWE to AEW represents more than a career shift. It signifies a paradigm shift in the wrestling business itself. His authenticity, coupled with AEW's innovative approach, breathed new life into pro wrestling for fans who felt it needed it, and the fans responded with unwavering support. Moxley embodies the spirit of AEW, a wrestler who is the brand of the wrestling company he represents. His legacy in AEW is undoubtedly going to continue and inspire both his peers and wrestling fans for generations to come. He occupies a role in AEW that is way bigger than just being a top star, but also being someone who, maybe like John Cena, steers the idea and perceptions of the company moving forward.